Pressure casting is a method to prevent air bubbles forming in a mould when casting material is poured in. What this involves is putting the mould into a pressure chamber and then increasing the pressure so any bubbles that have formed in the casting material are crushed down to tiny pinpricks and are no longer visible. In this video I'm going to go through the process and also look at the equipment that I've bought to do this. Now in order to do pressure casting you need two things, a pressure chamber and also a compressor to supply compressed air to the chamber. Now for a long while pressure chambers weren't easily available in the UK but I found a website that does sell them, it's a sprayequipment.co.uk and they sell a variety of different equipment. The pressure chambers come in a variety of sizes and I really went for the largest one I could afford. The reason being is I didn't want to necessarily be constrained by the size of the chamber and I could well envisage myself wanting to cast up a full statue at some stage. So while the smaller pots would probably have been perfectly fine for the majority of applications, I wanted a larger one just so that if I did decide to do a larger sculpture in the future, I could. I got the compressor from a chain of UK shops called Machine Mart um, and they sell a variety of different compressors. The one I've got is probably a bit overkill for this purpose, um, again I just bought the largest one I could afford um, and I do use it for other things, so it's not that I just use it for pressure casting, it's very useful for driving a variety of air powered tools as well. So um, they are quite versatile, um, nevertheless I got this one primarily for pressure casting and it works very well, um, I probably could have got away with a slightly smaller one. But because I was new to this, I wanted to make sure I had something that could do the job. Now in terms of cost, these things aren't cheap, uh, but they're not hugely expensive either. So the pressure chamber was about £400 and the compressor was about £250. So you're not talking thousands and thousands of pounds to do this, although of course this isn't a minor purchase. So obviously uh, do your research online before you uh, do commit. Nevertheless, I found them very, very useful and I do use them a lot and they do um, yield some very, very nice results when casting. So I can thoroughly recommend investing if you're thinking of doing so. So if you've ever done any mould making casting before, I'm sure you may have had the experience of pouring your casting material into your mould, waiting for it to set, opening the mould up and then finding that you have a massive great air bubble in the face of your sculpture. It can be very aggravating after doing so much work. Now the degree to which this happens can depend a lot on the type of casting material you're using. For many years I was using polyester resins which are quite cheap um, but the downside is that they're a little bit more viscous than polyurethane equivalents so that can lead to air bubbles more frequently than using polyurethane resins. But that's not to say that polyurethane resins are completely bubble free themselves although they are much thinner so it does seem a little bit less. So. Whether you need to pressure cast really does depend on the type of material you're using, but also the type of mould as well. So I've done a lot of casting with just simple dump moulds. Because the back of the mould is open, there's quite a lot of space for air to escape. So they do tend to be a little bit less prone to air bubbles appearing in the casts. Although again, that can depend on the level of fine detail in the mould as well. So if we look at this mould for example, as you can see there's lots of uh, bolts and small details on this piece. And I generally find that it's quite difficult for even a polyurethane resin to get into these small details. So in this case, pressure casting is necessary. But this mould, for example, has much less fine detail and I find that I don't need to pressure cast this at all. However, if we're talking about two-part moulds, so for example here where I'm casting a zombie sculpture, uh, this one definitely would need pressure casting, I think, simply because there isn't as much room for the air to escape and also because there's some fine detail in the sculpture itself. So the process involves putting your entire mould into the pressure chamber. So the first thing to really make sure is that your mould is actually small enough to fit in the chamber. So this can be a consideration to take into account when you're making your mould in the first place. You'll also need to think about the curing time of your resin. Some resins go off in minutes, so you do need to think about whether you're going to have enough time to get the mould into the pressure chamber before the resin sets. Now, as I mentioned, I've done quite a lot of casting with polyester resin. Generally got a working time of about sort of 15 to 20 minutes. So I generally find that that works fine for pressure casting. Some of the polyurethane resins I've been using, they have a much shorter working time. So although I think it probably would be possible to get these into the pressure chamber in time if you're quick enough, you may decide to use a resin with a longer curing time just to give yourself enough time to get the material into the mold and then get the mold into the pressure chamber. 
I have actually seen some people vacuum degas their resin before they actually pour it into their mold and then pressure cast it. I made a separate video at the same time as making this video about vacuum degassing rubber. So check out that video on my channel if you're interested in vacuum degassing. I will say I've had some bad experiences attempting to vacuum degas resin however. The degassing process worked just fine, however because the pot of resin was directly underneath the air intake, when I opened the valve and let the air back in, the air rushed in and blasted the resin all over the interior of my vacuum chamber, which was a bit of a problem there attempting to clear that up. So um, although I think it is possible to do, just a word of warning that it's quite difficult to clear the resin out of the chamber once you've exploded it everywhere, so just worth bearing in mind if you're going to try. So in this case I'm pressure casting some polyester resin into a silicon mould. So I'm treating this like any other casting process, I'm pouring the material in but I'm rotating the mould to allow any air in the mould to escape. Although pressure casting will deal with small bubbles trapped in a mould, if there are any large air cavities it won't be able to get rid of that entirely. So you do need to treat the casting process in the same way as any other casting process and try to eliminate air in the mould as much as you possibly can. In this case I'm also putting the mould into a plastic bag. This is just in case it leaks so I don't end up with resin all over the interior of the pressure chamber. So once you've got your mould into the pressure chamber you need to tighten up the large wing nuts on the lid. What I have found is that if they're not all done up to the same level of tightness, you can occasionally get a bit of a leak when the pressure is increased. So it's just worth making sure that they're all done up to the same level. So once you're ready to go, you need to make sure that the air release valve is tightened up so air can't escape. It's only a question of opening the valves on the pressure chamber itself and you can hear a bit of air that's trapped in the pipes being released there. Once they're open, you can then open the main valve on the compressor. You can hear air entering the chamber and the pressure gauge on the chamber itself is increasing. So this is one thing to be very aware of, compressors generally are very very loud, so um, it is worth uh, being aware of this as it may be a problem depending on where you're doing it. As you can see I'm actually doing this in my garden at the minute, although I have more recently built a workshop and placed a compressor in a cupboard behind a door. Even with that the compressor is still relatively loud, so um, just worth bearing in mind, uh, particularly if you're doing this at home because it can disturb the neighbours, so be aware. From what I've read, 50 or 60 PSI is generally considered to be a good pressure to operate at, so I'm compressing the chamber to 60 PSI, and once the gauge reaches that I then shut off the valves on the chamber itself. The compressor itself will continue running however, what it's doing is it's got its own internal reservoir which is kept at about 120 psi, so because that's been depleted the compressor itself is going to continue running and getting itself back up to pressure. We should see that the compressor shuts off once it gets to pressure. Right there we go that's all shut off. So the process is the same as any other casting process, give your piece sufficient time to set and then come back to the chamber. So once we've done that we need to release the air in the chamber so in order to do that you just loosen the release valve and you can hear the air rushing out there and the pressure on the gauge is beginning to fall. So in this particular case the cast came out really really well, barring one very tiny air bubble near the base of the sculpture. Um, I couldn't find any imperfections with this at all so it was quite impressive to see how well the pressure casting process worked. These two casts from a single pour mould are a good example of why you might want to pressure cast. So if you look at the cast on the left, you can see there are various air bubbles um, in the sides of the skulls and the sort of cheeks and forehead. However, if you look at the one on the right, there are no air bubbles at all. So pressure casting was really useful here because of the level of detail in this particular mould. I can't see how you could actually cast this without pressure casting. Similarly, if we look at this clear resin, on the left hand side you can see a piece that wasn't pressure cast, on the right hand side one that was, and you can see that there's plenty of air bubbles in the one on the left, whereas there isn't on the right. So that's a, quite a 
clear, if you will, demonstration of the benefits of pressure casting in this case. So that's it from me. I hope this was useful if you are thinking about trying pressure casting. Um, I can recommend it as a very useful method, particularly if you're trying to produce stuff which is very detailed or you just want to get a higher standard for your casting than you can otherwise achieve. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.